Rob, with the recent hostage situation and a Texas synagogue, the conversation surrounding terrorism from both threats overseas and right here at home has come to surface. Now, here to weigh in on that conversation, please welcome an anti-terror advocate and author of The New Founders. What would George Washington think of the United States of America if he were alive today? Joseph O'Connor, thank you so much for coming on this morning. Oh, thanks for having me, Alex. All right, Joseph, now, the terror situation at the Texas Synagogue brought attention to rising anti-Semitism. According to the Anti-Defamation League, there were over 2,100 acts of assault, vandalism, and harassment last year. Now, do you think the FBI response is saying that this was, quote-unquote, not directly connected to the Jewish community made it worse? I mean, he attacked Jewish people on their holy day in their place of worship. I mean... Why would they come out and say something like that? You, uh, you know, it, it's, hard, it's hard to fathom why they would come out and say that. I mean, the Jewish population is just small, the new um, part of the United States, yet it is by far and away the most attacked. Um, and and to think this guy came to the United States only a couple of weeks ago, he gets through, he goes to Dallas, he ends up in a, in a synagogue on, on Saturday and takes hostage, hostages. Who, who can believe that that wasn't... That that wasn't uh, anti-Semitism. Who can believe that that wasn't um, motivated by, by religion? It's it's impossible. It, and clearly, that's what it was. Now, some details are actually coming out this morning from the Telegraph out of the UK saying that Akram, who was accused of holding these hostages, he had red flag warnings. He had yeah, been yeah. in prison three separate times, dating all the way back to 1996. I mean, the FBI, they're kind of saying that they just completely dropped the ball. He was granted a tourist visa after having all of these past yeah. criminal record. I mean, how is this possible? Oh, look, I'm, I'm just afraid that they're just trying to get the uh, the narrative down that the, the biggest uh, threat in the United States right now is white supremacists and, and, uh, and you know, local terrorists, uh, domestic terrorists, when clearly... Right now, the Islamic terrorists is still, and I, look, I was there on 9-11, and I saw the buildings explode and people jump, and uh, my cousin was killed. And um, I can tell you what, what went on with Islamic terrorism on 9-11 20 years ago um, is, uh, is clear. It's there. They've not given up on it. We've supplied them now in, uh, in Afghanistan, and, uh, you know, this is... Uh, uh, you know, most I, I've known a lot of FBI agents. They're awesome people. I don't know who's coming up with this narrative that says that the uh, that this was not um, racially motivated and that the uh, you know the the white supremacist, the white man, the the Native American, um, if you will, it, it is is the biggest threat to our country. It's insane. Um, well, thank you for sharing that personal story um, about 9-11. Is that where your passion for um, being an anti-terror advocate co really comes from? Well, no. My father was murdered by a terrorist in 1975 also at uh, Francis Tavern. He was my cousin Steve who was killed on 9-11. He was his godfather. And we're coming up to the anniversary of Francis on January 24th. Um, the terrorists who murdered my dad were Marxist terrorists. They were from Puerto Rico. Um, they were sentenced to long prison terms and released by the Clintons and Obama, Biden. Um, so that's really where my passion lies. One of these terrorists remains in Cuba where we're trying to have them returned. So I understand what domestic terrorists are. Um, they're not the guy next door here. They're just not. Um, to, 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 insult to insult people who've been affected by terrorism by calling rioters terrorists, it, it hurt, it's hurtful, it's painful, um, it, it motivates people like myself who've been through this to fight back in, a, in the way we're doing it right now. And um, so my family's been affected twice by terrorism, very clearly, very directly. Um, I was nine years old when my father was murdered. And, uh, you know, it, it, terrorism is real and it affects real people and real families. And, I, I want Americans to understand that we're, it's not just a political tool, tool right. because that's what it's become. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Joseph Connor, um, for speaking out today and just keep up the fight. We really appreciate your time this morning. Well, anytime, Alex. Thank you very much. Uh, next, concerns from several major U.S. airlines over this week's five.